If you're studying writing or composition, you've probably been told about the idea of rhetorical appeals, which is a strange sounding term that you've probably not encountered before. So let's talk a little bit about what that means. The study of rhetoric comes to us from ancient Greece. This guy, Aristotle, is mostly responsible. So if you want to blame someone, blame him. But he came up with this idea of rhetorical appeals as a way to craft an argument. He literally said that the rhetorical appeals were, quote, the available means of persuasion, unquote. He didn't say it exactly like that because he was an ancient Greek. So he said it in Greek. However, he's the one who's responsible for even what today we call modern rhetoric studies. Everything's based in his work, in the work of some of his contemporaries. The main idea with a rhetorical appeal comes down to what he called the rhetorical triangle. It's called a triangle because, like the points of a triangle, these three ideas are inextricable from one another. The points function together. You usually have more than one tactic going on in a piece of persuasive writing. So, same here. You have three, they are ethos, logos, and pathos. These are all Greek words. We would term it as saying, you make an appeal to ethos, you make an appeal to pathos, or you make an appeal to logos. And what that means is that you're using one of those tactics to try to persuade somebody to do something. And just like when you're trying to convince one of your friends to go see a movie, depending on who the friend is and what the movie is, you might use a different tactic. Same thing with the rhetorical appeals. The first one that we'll talk about is ethos. Ethos is an appeal that's based on credibility or expertise, usually of the author. But if you are somebody who doesn't necessarily have any ex an expertise in the area that you're trying to write about, you can increase your own ethos by citing credible sources. Of course, you have to make sure they're credible sources. If you cite a crackpot, then you too will seem like a crackpot, which is, you know, not a good look. You also have the appeal to logos. Now, this is an appeal that's based on logic, like the word implies. When you use an appeal to logos, you're going to use information like data and statistics um, and factual evidence in order to persuade the audience in a logical way. You're trying to appeal to their sense of reason. The third appeal is called pathos, and this is an appeal based on emotion. You might think about the term pathetic, but it's not exactly a clear translation like that. An appeal to pathos is an emotional appeal that's trying to elicit an empathetic or a sympathetic response, some kind of emotion like anger or nostalgia or pity. These three appeals are different, but they often get bound up in one another. You seldom use just one tactic when you're trying to convince somebody to do something. And if you want to see these in action, the best place to do that is in commercials because they're so blatant. For instance, have you seen the sad dog commercials while Sarah McLaughlin sings to you over footage of really sad puppies? This is the clearest example of an appeal to pathos. This is trying to evoke pity and sadness in you to move you to donate to the cause. Commercials that cite data or statistics are ones that make an appeal to logos. You'll see this a lot in toothpaste commercials, especially if you've got a dentist or an actor portraying a dentist in his white jacket telling you that four out of five dentists prefer this particular brand of toothpaste because experts in the field, that is dentists, are the ones making this recommendation, then that's appealing to your logical, rational decision-making. An appeal to ethos is any time a commercial is trying to sell you something using the person who's in the commercial. If it's somebody famous, if it's Taylor Swift hawking Diet Coke, if it's Michael Jordan hawking sneakers, if it's Kylie Jenner hawking Diet Pepsi, all of these things are an appeal to ethos because they are expecting that you're going to know a celebrity and want to emulate them in some way and therefore you'll buy the products that those celebrities are endorsing. So 
that's really it when it comes to rhetorical appeals. Almost every persuasive argument that you encounter is going to be based in one of these kinds of appeals, if not more than one. They are the building blocks of persuasive writing, and you're going to need to know them in order to evaluate someone else's argument insightfully and to make your own arguments. The thing is, you already use these all the time. It's part of the way that we go about life. So it's just learning the names of them and learning how to spot them easily. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.